Hello everybody, my name is Dave and I am uh, giving you Dave's Life Over 65. This, mess this particular video is being made for my amateur radio subscribers. And uh, it's, so it's not really anything to do with survival bushcraft or just getting out in the fresh air, which is what I do. And I'm not really a survivalist or bushcrafter or anything like that, although I'm interested in that stuff. But this one is made about amateur radio. And I thought I'd make this video because I discovered that it, uh, you don't have to have a lot of equipment, huge antennas and wonderful uh, you know, matching devices and all kinds of stuff like that. You just have to have a radio, um, some form of an antenna. In fact, in my case, it's not even outside yet. I'm just uh, in the process of uh, um, putting together an amateur radio station. I was out of the hobby for some time uh, a number of uh, years back because I was busy doing other things. So, um, but now that I'm retired and have lots of time, I decided to get back into the hobby. So I uh, <clears throat> put up my indoor antenna again, which I will show you in a little while, and uh, got myself a little uh, QRP rig for now because uh, one thing about uh, living in an apartment building uh, if you're using a lot of power, you're going to cause interference um, with TVs and uh, things like that. So I'm running QRP 4 watts, and I'm, I'm kind of interested to see what I can do, because the, the bands were just, uh, some of the reasons I wasn't doing much amateur radio work in the past was because the bands were so bad. But we're on the way back up the uh, propagation cycles, although we just got hit with a, a huge sunspot, in fact, two of them. And that really took out the amateur radio bands uh, for a while. But they're starting to come back. And I caught it just as it got to the point where, where the uh, signals um, are starting to come back. And you can actually see um, on the, uh, on the um, program I'm using, which is FT8, you can see them coming in and going out and then coming back in. And if you time it right, you can, you can make a contact. Now, again, my station is uh, uh, a micro bit X running four watts into a... Um, a um, very simple dipole antenna for 40 and 20 meters. It's actually two antennas, one below the other. And um, um, I have a little issue with my, uh, with the um, SWR. If for some reason it comes and goes, I might have a bad solder joint up where it is. Um, I've purchased a random length antenna, which I intend to string outside sometime this summer and um, see if that improves my uh, my ratio. But uh, so running four watts, um, the uh, propagation, which I'll put a little thing into this video so you can see what uh, what the um, propagation report is from uh, QRZ. And uh, let's see, you can see my RAC hat here. Oh. Anyways, uh, so this is how I change hats. When I'm doing my bushcraft, I wear a bushcraft hat. Anyways, um, so what, with my uh, Q, with my um, micro bit X, uh, I... Uh, I um, homemade wire antenna, just basically the end of a coax and then one leg going off one off the ground and the other leg going off the uh, hot wire. That's my antenna. I just, I just basically stuck it to the wall, which is definitely not the best. Um, you, if you want to get it away from the wall about a foot or so or maybe more and get it hanging down from the ceiling about a foot or more, the uh, downside of doing that in this building is it's an older building and it they didn't use... Um, they uh, did things right back in those days. They had block concrete uh, construction blocks with uh, reinforced uh, uh, rebars in there, so it's not a really a good um, too too good to operate inside. And the other thing is, even with even with uh, QRP, um, RF sometimes gets into the radio and wreaks havoc with the little uh, controlling computer that's in there, which is an, uh, which is really an Arduino. Well, they call it a radino because it controls a radio, but it's really just a just one of those little tiny uh, uh, Arduinos that um, you can control all kinds of projects with. And the uh, nice thing about that is there's uh, all kinds of source code out there on the uh, internet for different uh, types of displays. You can upgrade the display. You get a new case and a larger display, and it gives you a lot of the functions that you see on the commercial radios now. But the main advantage is it's not a lot of power. I'm not going to be causing a lot of Radio, radio frequency interference with my uh, neighbors. And, um, you know, if you're running 500 watts, there's no challenge. You know you're going to make contacts. Um, seems to me that there's not an awful lot of voice traffic on the, on the bands anymore. Most people are using digital modes, FT8 being the big one. Uh, there's also one called J, uh, JS8 Call, which is uh, designed specifically for keyboard-to-keyboard -keyboard type communications, the sort of thing we would have used... Um, some of the older digital uh, modes 
which there are a ton of, which nobody uses anymore. But the uh, JS8 call is really good for um, uh, keyboard to keyboard. The nice thing about JS8 is that it keeps trying, and it'll try 10 times at regular speed, and if it doesn't hear anything, then it'll try every 15 minutes or every hour, whatever you set it to, to see if the um, see if the proper propagation has come back. really works well, and um, it has all kinds of different modes. You can go pretty fast, or you can slow it right down for um, days when the propagation isn't so good. Anyways, uh, I'll make a video showing how the station works. I made one contact today. Um, even despite the poor antenna and the being indoors, I discovered that I was getting um, really strong signals coming in from people who were using no more than maybe 20 watts at the most. So um, I saw one station, I got him on the first drive, so I was quite happy about that. And uh, uh, the guy, luckily the guy uh, uses uh, QRZ and he also uses, oh, for you Americans, QRZ and also um, EQSL. So I, I um, verified the QSO both ways. So stay tuned, I'll show you my uh, setup. Okay, here we are. This is my messy ham station. On the left there, you'll see the little bit X40, sorry, the micro bit X. And the unit with the green lights on right now is the uh, tuner, which I have to turn off. Right now I'm running it on a storage battery. Um, the thing is, so we can zoom in on it here. Oops, wrong way. Okay, the little radio there on the left, on top is my um, Rig Blaster, that's the uh, digital interface. You can see one of my uh, XTS 3000s, it's a UHF uh, P25 handheld. Power supply is in the bottom of the screen. So um, let's move on to the antenna system. Uh, right about the center of the screen, uh, you can't really see it because it's being covered up by the uh, curtains. Let's continue to the whoops, wrong way. There, you see the beginning of my antenna. So coming up behind the curtains is a simple um, RG8X coax. And the, uh, you'll see the antennas here. I always go the wrong way with this. Let's zoom out a bit. There we go. So the uh, the top wire is 20 meters, and for some reason it has to be perfectly straight. You can't have any, any loops or any uh, sags or anything like that. The bottom one is my uh, 40 meter antenna, and it's not uh, very tight right now because the, uh, let me uh, zoom in on it. I can. Yeah, if you see right in the middle of the corner there, you'll see a little thing hanging down. That's a um, plastic removable hook, and it uh, doesn't stick very well, so it came off. So my antennas, as you can see here, run along the wall. That's where the 20 meter ends. The 40 meter comes along. And another 90 degree. Everything has to be 90 degrees or you know, it messes up your um, SWR. So the 40 meter antenna, there's the uh, driven element on the left. And the um, the braid side or the um, counterpoise, depending on how you look at it. Come on, focus. There we go. Is um, coming along this side. And here. is my uh, homemade magnetic loop. 
That works um, with, on uh, 20 and 40 as well. It has uh, a huge tuner there, uh, variable condenser, which allows me to tune um, 20, 30, and 40 meters. N0 and BH uh, propagation window, solar propagation, and as you can see, HF conditions are 80 and 40 are fair during the day. 20 is fair, but it uh, didn't do much on 20. So propagation isn't that great. There's your numbers. I don't know what they mean yet. I did it one time, but I've forgotten. So, but I can tell by that, that uh, the propagation isn't at its optimum at this time. Nevertheless, I did make a contact today with a um, station N1AOA, Paul, in New, uh, where the heck is he? Hang on, let me go back to, about uh, 347 miles or if you prefer 558 kilometers and he is in oh neat web page what's this loss so it's the words Cedar Hill Connecticut, New Jersey, whatever. Anyways, uh, that was a fair haul for four watts inside a, an apartment building with a pretty crappy antenna. So that shows you what you can do with uh, amateur radio, even with the most meager station. All right, let's see if this... Uh, let's see if this... Uh, video actually I think I'm locked up again oh I am just bear with me my computer goes away for a few seconds every once in a blue moon I guess I can edit this out meanwhile I'll have a quick sip of my water ah, there we go How come I can't see the, uh... well, control F10.